Okay, we're now recording. So this will be up on the YouTube channel and I posted that link in the in the chat box. Um, and it's also in the announcement section of the fam Family Book Creator Group. So um, so uh, this, this class is gonna be about the media. And now on this person, there are, um, well, there's 11 media items. Now this whole color code, this is, um, oh yeah, I don't, this is a Word document that explains the color coding. Now I don't have all these people in the tree or I haven't adjusted the color coding to it, but uh, Because it, it can automatically do the color coding, but some cases, like in this case, I, I since we've only got eight colors to choose from, I adopt a double, a double colors, two colors for each, for most of the child. Now, basically, the women all start with pink, and um, well, there's only two boys. But the standard default color coding won't fit on this so they allowed you to basically well you can get just create your own color coding legend um and then just uh assign it this group fpc color coding legend and then when you're in the group uh when you use that uh when you use the code to say, okay, display a color coding legend, if that person has a, me, a Word document that with that, um, with that media uh, grouping, then it will substitute, it's built in with the one you provide, so. And that I have here in the forward, it's like just under those brackets, color coding legend. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about these pages. Um, it all basically deals around with the photo album. And so this will be a short, this book should only take about a minute or so to generate. Um, so I'll just let you see what the standard media and these media items or just attached to the person. I, I do have citation media, but uh, for right now, I'm not printing any of that. And that says images linked to sources or source citations. That's unchecked. It's kind of grayed out right now because it's generating the book, but. Um, and typically I don't have it include the date um, just because, um, to print the date, because in Family Tree Maker, when you start adding in the items, it, it will start doing a date and time code for, uh, when you add the media item. But you can change that to a date yes. photo was taken. Yes, you can. And I'll be covering that. As a matter of fact, the as a matter of fact, the the ones that have a date in it or the date and time, that's not a valid date that Family Book Creator understands. So if you do assign dates, because it will assign by dates. Um, so I'm going to just get down to where the media displays. So right here. I'm going to exit out of this and shrink the, um, the. Okay, just so we can start kind of seeing. Now you can see these pictures really aren't. This media, okay, see, see, these are the ones that have the time in it. See, the, those are 
invalidate, so it puts those first. Otherwise, 36, 79, 79, that's a 79. John, what do you mean family tree maker thinks those are? Our family book creator. Oh. Family where, book do you, creator. Where, do you, where do you change that? Like, where do you change Okay, I'll, I'll show you. So, I mean, ba basically right now, these are in, not in any specific order. So one way you can do it is, okay, so like when you double click on the item here, okay, this is CV, here's the date. Okay. So you can just change it. Now, I don't know exactly when that is, but I'll just say, well, maybe that was about 1970. Um, that's just a and guess. You could put in description. Yeah. More about it. Now, see this one, okay. Well, here, see the dates right on this one. 1936, that one's on there. This is a sign outside their uh, things, uh, outside their house. So I'll put like 1978 for that. This is their tombstone. Well, well they died 1979, so I'll put 1979. <clears throat> CB and Millie, this is probably about 1977. Funeral, well, that would be 79. And you could even put more spe specific dates. But that's where you can change it. That's a good practice to do anyway, though, is it not? To, if you know approximate date of the picture, media. To yeah. Yeah, and this one I knew, okay, was CB and Gladys' 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And well, here you can see this picture was developed August 61, while their 50th anniversary was in July. So, mm -hmm. um, how much can you put in that description? Uh, like if you've got a family gathering of about, uh, I, say, 100 people, would it I, hold? I'm not really sure. You can easily do a thousand. Now, if you do need more, you do have a notes area here. And the notes area, there is no limit. Okay, where did you get that? Get to that's that? That's right next to it. See details oh, okay. and notes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you, you can put it there and there, I know you don't have a limit or at least no practical limit. And that would come out below the picture in family book? Yes, because uh, let me. Uh, Do those notes show on Ancestry under the picture? Notes, I don't think so. The description will. Right. The notes, I <laughs> don't think so. I'll have to try it. Yeah, because see here, you can tell it to display the caption, the description, date, and notes. You got the <laughs> option of in your all of that stuff to print. <clears throat> so. Um, can I ask a question? Certainly. Um, that time, is that the time that you entered this this media picture or? Yeah, yes, that's, that's the it, time or? I actually added it to the tree. Okay, okay. Is there any really beneficial reason why you need to have that? Yes. No, other than it just, that's just the way it is. Well, you can oh. sort the media then by. Uh, yeah, because see, see here, see if I just add this picture here. Okay. And this is just a sixth generation. And see, yeah, see today's date and time, so. Oh, okay. That's okay. what how it threw in. Mm -hmm. okay. So there's Gladys, my grandmother, Dorothy, then that's my mom, my sister, her daughter, and granddaughter. Okay, <laughs> okay. So on some of the other media items that you had, um, they were like uh, newspaper clippings or obituary notice from the newspaper. They were in larger print. 
mine right. are not printing that big that you can read them. Right. Do I have to go back and enlarge the actual item? And no, then you, scan you, it you in? do that. You can do that within Family Tree Maker itself. In Family Tree Maker, okay. Because here, like, see this obituary. See, it's by default goes to about forty-eight percent size. Okay. Well, see here, I put in this media category. FBC photo album, 80% of full width. So it's going to increase it to about 80% of the page. In Family Book Creator. In Family Book Creator. And, oh, oh, that's right. I did an export, so it doesn't have all these. Do you uh, have to save that, John? Pardon? Do you have to save that? Any place, or is it once you enlarge it, is it there permanently? It's it's there permanently okay. because uh, when you go to the media and you categorize media, see here, there's custom categories that Family Book Creator can use. Um, let me just go to. Um, And in Facebook, under the file section, no, that's my cousin. <laughs> oh, I don't want this group I want. Okay, you're in Family Tree Maker now, right? Well, no, I'm on the website. Here, here's the Family Book oh. Creator Users Group. Oh. Or the group. Now in the Files section, I've got two files. There's this uh, FBC Media Categories text, and then I've also got a tree backup, just called FBC Categories. Um, and I'll explain. the difference here because in this media categories, this is just simply a text file of all of the, the categories that Family wow. Book Creator can use. So when you do use these um, for these categories, uh, yeah, see there's a full width. Let's just say there's some I want some other categories like 60% width, I can copy it. Then in here, I can just say add and paste it with control V or you can right click and say paste. But see, there's the keyboard shortcut control V. I'm confused now. This looks like a family tree, family tree maker media, but you're working in right. family book. Be, be, I'm confused how you got the two going together. Well, well, <laughs> well, I've got Family Book Creator closed right now. You do. Okay, so you're in Family Tree Maker. Family Tree Maker. But see, okay. these categories that start with FBC, only Family Book Creator understands those or Oh, okay. Those. Okay. How did you get to this this screen? That okay. You're... This is on the main media tab. On the media, yeah. Then you go up to media and say categorize media. Oh. And then you okay. can click add and add them. Now another way you can. Wait, mine doesn't doesn't have anything of FBC in front of it. You have to add them. Yeah, you, you have, have to, to add them. Now, if you want a quick way of doing it, okay, that's what this tree file is for, this FBC categories. Okay. And I and it's 2000 it's in 2017 format. So 2019 will immediately convert it if that's what you got. But since Family Book Creator 2019 will also work with 2017. I decided, well, let's just play it safe, put, keep it in 2017. So what you do on that is you will, um, you will restore that uh, tree.
Now we'll just do that. Now it's got one person in here called to be deleted. Because in this person, I've got the three custom facts that Family Book Creator understands. And it's got one media item. And I literally assigned every Family Book Creator group to it. So, and the, and the main reason being is now when I go back to this tree, you go into my tree now, or your tree. Now I'm going to merge. Um, don't need to do a backup. I'm going to do that FBC categories 2017 tree. Oh, I see. John, is that what you called your tree? Yeah. Okay. Your sample tree with one person. Yeah, this FBC categories. That's why I named just say, okay, include all files. It's not going to match anyone, but the whole purpose being. Okay, yep, okay, that person's, yeah, see it's a new person to be deleted. And I call it that just so it's easy to find. And the whole thing is, is like, I mean, you can leave the person in there if you want, it's uh, here. How did you get all of those categories linked to that one media item? Did you have to add them all in here? Yeah, yeah, because see, once I created them, then I just started checking them, so. But why, why couldn't you just create them all in your main? Um... Well, I, I'm, show, I'm showing you why, because this is a fast way to enter them all. But you must have imported that, um, Yes, um, I, I initially had to do it, but I did it so, see now, see what now when I go to categorize media, see all these categories that weren't there before are not there. But my question is, how did you get them, how did you get all those FBC categories in your um, um, pseudo tree I, that I you made with manu, one person? I manually entered them. You manually entered them. Yeah. But see, Why don't you just manually enter them in? Because, in it, because it takes about five, 10 minutes and then that's assuming you can do it. And then, so if, I you, see. then I've so got if you, like about six trees. If, if, if you had them and you, I'll call it your pseudo tree, whatever you want to call it, yeah. your unknown person tree, then every time you create a new tree, then you can just import that or merge right. that tree and then you always have them. And I mean, I only have one tree, so it would just be a data entry one time. Right, right. But and yeah, I see if, what if you ever do start a new tree or something, <clears throat> and well, and like I said, when I exported this one, I didn't think that, okay, it's only going to export the media categories that are in use. But see, now they're, now they're all included. So um, it, how do you, can you just walk me through one of them, how you, I, I'm, I'm new with Family Book Creator and I'm really stumbling and fumbling along and I'm just having a real hard time. So I can, I can. It, it might open. be. I think if for people who have one tree, then, I have, then yeah, if you have one tree, you might just want to use this text file, and then you can copy and paste the ones that you want. Yeah, those are all well, on the Family Book Creator website. If well, they're, well, they're all in the manual, but but they're not well. The new manual coming out, these will all be listed together, <laughs> except for all these different indications for these widths, because uh, this number can actually be anywhere from 10 to 100. So, I mean, you could do 11, you could do 47, you could do 95% if you'd want. So for people who have one tree, they would want to go to the file that's on Family Book Creator right. Facebook. 
I, I only have one. If you, if you want to, you want to, you know. It's to answer that question, I think. Yeah, if you got one tree, doing the tree, it's, it's just a quick way of entering them for you. Or like I said, you can use this text file and copy and paste them. Okay. No, well, I just have the two, one tree, so. There are two yeah. issues, right? There's the getting the categories into your tree, yeah. either by doing the merge or by entering them. Yes. And then there's assigning the categories to all of the existing media that you have. That you want. That's the place right. where I'm stuck. Well, <laughs> well, you don't have to assign it to every single media. Okay. Well, like I said, for, for actual pictures, the, the only time I do it is like if, if um, cause I'll create a book and say, look at the media and say, oh, okay, maybe this picture needs to be bigger. That's when I will assign, okay, I'll either okay. tell it, okay, go full width or, uh, I or maybe 80% or 70. I noticed on your media, when you created the book just now you had you had a lot of pictures or media items that didn't have a category assigned right well yeah because see if I go by here um yeah see I've got plenty of media that aren't assigned a category and in, in those cases then it will print at the standard resolution or the standard scaling of 48 percent so that it can fit four to a page. How do you attach it to the person though? That's what I'm wondering. How do you attach that media category to the person? Oh, well, you, you don't attach the media category to the person, you attach it to the media. You to the media. attach it to yeah. the media item. Yeah, so, so you've got your media categorized Okay, so like, okay, let's just say the CB, let's just say I would want this one bigger. Yeah, because right now you don't even have it attached to any category. Yeah, and it doesn't need to be generally unless you want it. But if, you, if I do want it bigger or smaller, all I'd have to do is click on the categories and say, oh, okay, I want that one, you know, full width. Full, full width and 100% are the exact same thing. Okay, okay, go back. I just, I don't have that FBC listed on all mine. So I just have the one tree. How would yeah. I enlarge one of my media items? Like I kind of lost back well, on that. Well, for, first you have to add the media categories. Okay. And so like like I said, that's where it's nice if, if you either you merge I have to add all the FBCs? Yeah, you either that's... merge in that one tree I mentioned where I'll automatically enter them for you, or you go up to media. 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 Okay, that's where I'm at now, okay, except so, I don't have so, that listing. So then you click on FBC. add, and then if you can print, if you can have this text file open at the same time, you select one, hit control C to copy, or you can right click and say copy. Go over to here and paste. And now that one's in red because it's already saying. And click OK, and then just keep going down the line until you add them. Oh my. John, <laughs> you don't have to add them all if you don't want to use them all. Right, yeah. right. So, and you only so have to add the ones. You don't have to enter them all as a matter of fact. Okay. So well, like I said. Uh, so, so I have my pitch, my media item. I yeah. click add. I'm in yeah. a category media. Yeah. Okay. And then I click add on, on my item. Yeah. And what do you want to and do? I get a category name. Yeah. And it's where I want to, what category I want to put that in? No. Yeah. <laughs> like such as obituaries or well, photo album? Well, I mean, or... you, you could put it in obituaries or, you know, you can categorize them however you want. Okay. Um, but I mean, as far as these FBC categories, 
to, in order to assign them, you have to add those categories because these are not standard categories. Oh, okay. John, what is the photo album ones for? Photo, photo album, the, these are for increasing or decreasing the size. Oh, okay, that's what I wanna do. I want, cause I wanna increase the size of my media item. You know, cause like I said, and typically if you wanna increase them, I would say probably do this, yeah, this photo album full width. Cause that do will it make when, it as do, big as possible. So I'll basically when, take up I'm, a sorry, page. John, yeah, I have my uh, my book right here. I can maybe just show her quickly what happens when you do that. Like this is one of the books I did. Now those four pictures are all set at what's the default, John? Forty. Four, four, Forty-eight. Forty-eight. Now if I I'll go to the next page. On the next page, I wanted one picture larger. So on this page. I left the two at the top at 48 yeah. and the one at the bottom I set at 60. Yeah. So it automatically forced the bottom picture as a single. See how that hmm. worked? Yeah. Just by changing the default. And then on my next page, again, I wanted to split it. And then I'll show you a full page by putting this one at 100%. One second here. I asked this one to go to 100% and it gave it filled the whole page. No. So it's just a matter of going in. I have no categories in my complete book. I do not have categories for any pictures other than size categories, which are the FBC size. Right. And I just entered them. I entered them all manually because I only have one, one tree. So in that category name, what should I put? What should I type in there? <laughs> if, if you're going to enter in any of them, enter in this one, FBC underscore photo album underscore full width. Okay, where where do I find that? Or do I just have to type that in myself? Well, either type it in or like I said, in the FBC group under files, there is this text file. Oh, okay. FBC media categories that text. And I created that just so you could copy it and paste it. Because, okay. because if you do a typo, the category is not going to do anything. Oh, okay. You know, so, so that, if you forget to put that underscore, that category is useless. I mean, okay. FBC doesn't understand it. Okay, okay. So the control of the size of the picture is actually embedded into those categories? Right. It's the category determines the size. Gotcha, thanks. Okay, okay. So that's what, exactly what I would type in where it says category name. Right, I'll just do right. one at a time and see how it works for me. <clears throat> okay. Right. Okay. And then click on add or okay. Yeah. Okay. And okay. then that just adds, adds it and then you just can then put a check mark by it. And, check and then mark. once okay. you've added it, then you can add that category to any photo. Oh, okay. Okay. So that'll be on that category list then. Okay. Yeah. Once, okay. once you add it. Okay. And when, when you get the get categorized, the media categorized, um, say like for my great grandparents, I want their picture that was taken when they immigrated to be with with them. So just put in connect that or link that to to that, to my great grandfather or? Yeah, yeah, just link it to your great grandfather or your great grandparent. Okay, and um, is it better to add them under the notes or is it better to put them at the bottom, like in, uh, in the people, in the person place, person uh, I'm talking about here? Well, I, well, I, I, I guess it depends upon where you do it. Th this is the view where I, I do the bulk of my work right here in this view right here. So I click on the media and then, like I said, for, um, then like I said, for something like this, you know, here, here's that sixth generation picture, then I can just drag it. So now it's attached to that person to see B Hall. Okay. 
it's not under any uh, note fact, any any fact description. No, no, but th that you could do. You do that from the person tab. And if, if you don't have media and notes here, um, you have to go under tools and options, and then you have to make sure these are checked here under okay. fact display. Because if those are unchecked, yeah. Well, see those tabs here disappeared. Yeah. So uh, you would put it on the on the right then. You would put the media on the right. Now, now if you do, because I do have, like, say, if you would have something. To, uh, I've been putting it down like where it says person notes, media, web links. Oh yeah, I mean yeah, you can you can copy it down there too. It's the same thing. Um, let me, you know, here's a document, you know, you can copy it down that way too. Mm -hmm. You know, let me unlink that one. So, and then likewise, then like say, like this picture, double click it. If you want, you can assign it. Let's just say I want that one full page. Um, oh, there's the full width right there. Well, full width or 100%, it's the same thing. And then that would make that print bigger if, if you wanted. Uh, can you so, assign? Can you assign a category once you've created it? Can yeah. you assign it to more than one media at the item at the same time, or do you have to? Yeah. Do it well, yeah, because let's just yeah. So you could say just hold down the control thing, and let's just say all of those. Mm -hmm. Now I let go of the control and then right clicked. Uh, oh, you got to do this from the media. It's it's easier from the, yeah, you got to do it from the media. Media tab. Hold on, let me just see here. Yeah, you got you, uh, you got to do it from the media tab. You can do okay. it. Okay. So, so like if there's like multiples like this, you can then right click, say categorize media. Oh, that's good. And say, okay, full width. Okay. No, yeah, that was uncategorized. Let me just say all media. Yeah. Let's just go this way. Yeah. Categorize. Yeah, and see, sometimes you get stuff like that. So it means some have that category, some don't. No, they all will. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. No. Yeah. So when you make you see. Right there is the category. Oh. But um, when you make changes in Family Book Creator, and then do you have to always go back and create a document in in Word in order to see those changes? There isn't a way you can toggle back and forth. Well, I, 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 I usually just especially when I just wanna, when I'm just proofreading the media to see how it is. Yeah. I, I just save it as a PDF. But yeah, it's like, if you wanna see like any tweaks you've made. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you do um, have to regenerate the book. You do have and, to, and okay. That, and that's why I also recommend when you're playing, only do a small book so it doesn't take that long. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you, you, yeah. I just want to say just CB Hall, you know, here I can just say zero to zero. Yeah, yeah. And then it will do it just for him. Yeah, I'll let it replace it. And then it doesn't take near as long. Because like if I did the, the full book, you know, it uh -huh. takes yeah. about 10 minutes. Right. And right. you don't want to tweak one thing and say, okay, how does that look? Uh -huh. Okay, 10 minutes later, you see it and, you know. Yeah, okay, okay, I got that. Uh-huh, okay. So, well, then if you don't, if you, uh, one other thing you can do to, um, you know, let's just see how this turns out first. No, don't make it complicated for me. I'm having enough problems. I need the easiest possible way. Well, so well there, there's creating... an easier way than assigning dates to everything. Oh. You can't, you can manually just arrange them how you want them. Arrange. Arrange the photos. The photos. Oh, can I? Okay. When you get into the word, when you get into well, word. Well, no, before you get to word. Oh, Okay. Cause see, there's that pictures full, full width and stuff. But like, oh. let, let's just say, like, uh, you want to start rearranging this order. Oh yeah. Okay, got to get out of here. <laughs> see, I, you can just manually rearrange them. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can't move to the end. You can use those arrows too, can't you? Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can use the arrows too. But you can also say, okay, this one I want, like over here. Well, this is the tombstone. This one can go there. Say, I like I wanted all my pictures to be at the end of my book, at the towards the end, rather than like one portrait by each person, but then all these extra pictures at the end. So that can be well. Arranged. Well, the the pictures by default are at the end of their section. Their section, okay. Because. Um, let me let me get to the book that just generated. You can see, okay, so here's like the normal thing here. Uh huh. You just. Uh huh. You know, okay. There's. CB, it gives his info, that's a fact note. I've got to clean up that area yet. And then there's Gladys, Laura Bloomfield, his wife. Okay, here's their kids. Okay. Um, okay, come on. Like I said, there's 11 kids. Okay, so then after all that, then here's their media item. So here's the items that are attached to CB. Okay, okay. And then here's this funeral card. There's this obituary. See that one I said full. Mm -hmm. That one, okay. And then now here, then here's then the spouses, Gladys's okay. funeral card and her obituary. Okay, okay. And then just... Okay, okay. A picture of hers, and then it goes on to the next yeah. section while here it's in mm -hmm. next places and stuff. So it yes. is at the end of their section. Mm -hmm. And do, do all, can you ever um, omit some of the pictures that are media items with a person and not have them printed? Yes, yes. And what, what you would do is um, say for whatever reason, say that one, say you didn't want to print for whatever reason. Um, I, I, you, I, you can assign it to a category. Um, I, I created just say, do not print because it's obvious. Um, Mm -hmm. And Family likewise, pictures. you know, pictures can be in more than one category. And then, John, since, 
Yeah. Why you got that up there? What I do, I just click on that where just below there. Go back to the screen you were just on. Yeah. Where it says private. I just yeah. click that and that eliminates the picture. And it yeah, puts, you can do that. You, it yes, you can do that. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's a but good idea. If that's your it. tree is synced with Ancestry, that will remove the photo from Ancestry. Oh, okay. Okay, that's fine with me. Mm -hmm. So, because no, nothing private syncs with Ancestry. And okay. also, <laughs> then, if you ever had to re download your tree from Ancestry, you would not right. get that photo. Okay. But to do it, and so, yeah, you can do it by marking it private because there is an option whether or not to include private photos or not. Um, <clears throat> and that's this include private or not then that is unchecked by default you but have ex there is this exclude filter so you can assign categories that say i don't want to print and say i've got like the do not category printed so anything that's assigned the do not print won't print okay and you can assign multiple categories, like, you know, maybe you do want the citation media, but you don't want the census images. So you could uncheck the census. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So all those census images then wouldn't print. And that's assuming you went in and categorized your census media. You know, Which I have, so. <laughs> you know, so that is how you can exclude it. Now this include filter is like, say like with census, let's just say there is, um, let, let's just say there is like one or two census items you do want to print. Say the vast majority of the census don't print them, but let's just say there's one or two you do want to. You can assign that another category. You can still keep it in the census category uh, you know, like here, let, let's just say like this 1920 census image, let's just say I do want this to print. Now it is in the census category, but I could create another category or just, I could either create a category or just assign another one like, I don't know, let's just say documents. And now let me go back here. And th th this took me a while to figure out what what that include and exclude, because it always does the include last. Oops, items, photo. So I can say, okay, exclude census, but include documents. So since that one particular document, census item was labeled as a document, so even though all the other census images won't print, that one will because I've categorized it. Hmm. So, cause maybe that one might explain something or say, hey, this, for some reason this year, he was, he is living in another state or something, you know? Of course you'd also have to have this one checked, but. Hmm. <coughs> John, what was the FBC description for uh, having the pictures print at the end of the book? I missed that. Well, there, there isn't one for to print at the end of the book. It, they always said, print at the end of their section. Oh, uh, at the end of the, each family section. All right, I thought you said it was FBC default or FBC something. To... No, the, there isn't anything about where they print. I mean, well, they the only print asked, in one location. The lady asked, and you showed where the her pictures were at the end of those it, sections. It's at the end of the section. And right. I mean, that's just the way it does it. I mean, th this one, there is really, I only, I did it a quick, so there really is only one section. So, but. If, so if you don't have it categorized, then they're going to print at the end of the section? They all, all media prints at the end of the section. Period. No matter what categories you've got assigned. Okay, okay. Okay. Well, Jump well, with one exception, and that's certain word documents. But I'll get to that. 
So. Yeah, the book John did, just did was just for one person. So that's why that shows. Oh, up yeah, because yeah. see, like here's here's my here's the main book right here. Yeah, yeah, that was it. So here's the fam here's my family. You know, there's their media. But then here's the next section then. Okay, so this is uh, my grandparents and their kids. Then there's their media at the end of their section. Right. And then it goes on to the next children and their, then their media section, so. Okay. There, there isn't anything like to say, put all media at the end of the book. Oh. I misunderstood that, and yeah. thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, uh, it's not just pictures that can be printed. You can actually print PDF documents. Uh, you know, like here's like the standard. Well, let's see what would be a. Uh, Here, here's like a here here's like a a, a uh, this is just a family tree maker report because I I keep track of people's Facebook pages for all the cousins and then this is like a PDF document. Well, let's just say I would want to add this into the book. I can't. Whoops. Get out of here and say, okay, let's just say I would want it, say with CB Hall. So I can just add this document to there. Now that's a PDF document. Now a PDF document or a Word document, you have, if you want to print in the book, you have to assign categories. Pictures, pictures, they're optional and they're mainly like for the size. For PDFs, there, there is a handle story as image or handle story as text. Now, uh, this one could be either handle story as image or handle story as text. Uh, if it says text, it's gonna pull in just the text. It's not gonna worry about the formatting. Uh, usually, well here, let me get a better example. This isn't the perfect example. Let me just unlink this. Because a better example, I probably actually have to go to the, my documents here. Let's see. Okay, here, here's like an obituary that I saved from newspapers.com. And I actually prefer saving them as a PDF for the simple fact that it basically gives you all the, here's where I got it from, here's the paper, the date of the paper, the page number. Mm -hmm. So this is a good example. Now, when I print it out, I really only want to print out this article. I don't want to print all this other stuff. I mean, it just takes up space. So as a PDF, I tell it, okay, handle story is an image. And this is where I use multiple categories. And I'll also say, uh, Let's see. Use only the largest image. 
So since this is the largest image right here, this actual article, that's what we'll print, nothing else will. And then likewise, I, I can also tell, okay, because that's kind of a, a big article that if it only prints at like the 48%, you're not gonna be able to read it. It's gonna be kind of like this. Right. So I can also tell that to print full width, just like you would with a picture. Or I could do the 80%, 60%. But so I assigned three media categories to just that one item. And then that's how you'd get a PDF to print. That first and one was uh, handle story as? As image. As image. So it's gonna treat it like a graphic, as a picture. Okay. Handle story as image basically says, treat this as a picture. And then, uh, and that's why the full width. And then I also tell it, use only the largest image. Um, there are some categories, like let's just say you've got a will that's multiple pages. That say if you would want to print out. By default, a PDF is only going to print the first five pages. So if it's more than that, you could also say include all pages. Or let's just say it's a manuscript, maybe you've got attached to them, but you don't necessarily want to print out the manuscript, but maybe just the title page, just say, hey, this is available. You could say, print only the first page. Um, those are kind of more specialty items. So where would that print? Where does that physically show? Like is That, that will print it down in the media category, just like any picture would. So you'd have like, you'd have, say it was a three page manuscript then you're gonna have picture number one, then all of a sudden you're gonna have three pages of text and then picture number two? Yeah, well, it, it will be listed as a media item, but okay. so, so the, the, three, the three page document would be like media item two or figure two. Yeah, okay. Did you assign all of these um categories or does did fbc assign them fbc like, doesn't assign anything you okay, have to you, do it you assigned it oh, okay the family book creator just uses them okay 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 now uh are there certain ones that you just use for well well since most of my pdfs are like these newspaper articles I use the handle stories image, use only largest image, and then possibly a size one, depending upon the, doc, the, the article. You know, if it's a tall, skinny document, I know I got to print a full page. If it's just a little heading, like so-and-so, you know, then that's no big deal. I can just let that print normal size. Um, Now, if you want, uh, then the other thing is like, now if you've got like a Word document, um, let's see here. Da, da, da. No, that's too big for this. Okay, here, here's a Bloomfield history. It's, uh, 18 page document or something. Now this is for uh, my great grandmother Gladys. She's the Bloomfield line. Uh, if this was, um, let me close that. I can add this to her and uh, let's just say, now to get a Word document to print, um, yeah, I gotta go. this you can't click on. Um, 
to get a word document to print you at this is where um, use the FBC handle story as text. This is how you can get a word document to print and now this you don't have to worry about any sizing because it will import just the text and, and pictures if it if it is in there. Um, the one advantage is say like this Bloomfield family history. Um, here's where you can have it print either before or after the family chart. So like if it's maybe a story that isn't specific to this one person, maybe it describes the family business that's, you know, generations of people have used it. Mm -hmm. You know, you could have it print like either right before or after the family tree chart, which is um, you know, this is the family tree chart area right here. So you could either have it print before here. So basically, this would be like the next page. It would print here, or. <coughs> Excuse me. Or you could have a print right after before it starts talking about the people themselves. You know, where it could you could insert you could insert the story. So it could be like a story about, like I said, either uh, the the history of of where the family came from. It could be like, like I said, a family business that spanned generations. Um, or just some other details, maybe not specific to that one person. Um, but that's how you can include a word, a word document into it. John? Yeah? I have a word document which is all of my relatives that served in wars. So there's like 20 different wars and maybe 60 or 70 or 100 relatives. Yeah. And I want that to appear at the very end of the book prior to my index of places. So if I created a, a Word file and then attached that media item onto the very last person in my book, and then said print as a file, would that then print immediately? Um, at that yes, point, or how would yes, it actually that? that would, you and know, would you'd have to look, and see, look at the book and see, okay, who the last person is. Yeah. Yeah. So it would be, one um, of, like, like, yeah, my grand, so, my grand so, so I'd attach it to my granddaughter, say, if that's so, the yeah. Place. So it'd be, a, yeah, typically a child. Yeah. Well, okay. Well, the, you might have to attach it to the parent of the child. Right. Yes, yes, you're right. Yeah. Because the child itself wouldn't necessarily have their own section. Right. Yeah. So if I attached it to my daughter's, actually it wouldn't be my daughter, then I'd probably attach or, it to her or, husband. Well, actually you could attach it to the last person. Yeah. Uh, but then you can add the fact of... Uh, There's a custom fact and that's listed in there. You could tell that uh, your granddaughter, she has her own family section. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. And that will force family book creator to create a family section for her. Okay. And then that way, then all her media would print. So so if you have that document, that, that would be one way of doing it. Okay, perfect, perfect. So... Now that wouldn't show in the index, of course. No, but if you did, you if you know how to do the index entries, uh, I mean, there's lots of word tutorials out there. Okay. If you save as book, uh, you can turn on the hidden fields, and you could insert in, you know, the table of contents entry for it, and then when you generate it, it will force that uh, the table of contents is generated field right okay no so then, then it could add it automatically and i could also probably even throw it into the forward and just explain it and give it a, what page number it was on yeah it's like 
Yeah, me. Yeah, or else I might even just throw the entire document into the forward section. But but like I said, that's not at the end. And I, right. I know I think I have. I don't know if I put in a request or maybe if I told other people just put in a feature request. You know, or have like an appendix section. Right, mm -hmm. right. Yeah, that would be handy. Yeah. You know, because then you could throw in documents like that and um I've, I've actually talked to stefan about that about having an appendix yeah that was a year or so ago so john yeah can you uh exclude notes and put in your own word document and just have that as as the notes but not what the other notes are you say do not print notes yeah, that's totally optional. Um, yeah, I think I've got too much stuff going on. Um, I think I've got too much stuff going on right now. Just close bounds. So then you just uh, take a picture of your notes uh, that you want to include and make it a media thing? Well, well, what you can do is you can uh, make them, uh, you could either, you can make the notes private that you don't want to print it. Mm -hmm. um, and how do you do that? <laughs> oh. There's a little padlock icon. Well, I gotta wait for her. Exit. Same thing with notes. Uh, well, here, let me, well. Here, this note, you, you uh, say like this information. Yeah, see this information here, probably really wouldn't have to, all I'd have to do is toggle that padlock icon. So now it's highlighted. This is now a private note. And that won't be, now this note, particular note here will not print. If you didn't want any of the notes to print, you just only wanted no. the Word document that you've created for that. No, person. if you don't want any notes, you just tell it, don't print notes. Okay. Um, and that, that's right in uh, items code. Now you have to do the primary partner in these four sections. You just say, okay, exclude person notes. Uh, and then you have to go into each fact and say, okay, don't print don't print the fact notes. Okay. Assuming you've got, if you don't have fact notes or you don't use them, you don't have to worry about unsetting it. Yeah, only got, I like, do have fact notes. notes. Yeah, that I would want to print, but uh, the other notes are just personal notes. And I, I, I've i done a summary yeah. of each person that I want to print about. And I want to print my own notes that summarizes. It's in a, you know, just a story right. form rather than, just bits of pieces there that's in the notes section. Yeah, see, see, and in general, if there's stuff I don't want to print, I'll put that yeah. in, a, in the research note area rather than the person note area. Because research notes are private by default, but... Um, Where is research? Uh, it's, it's, well, uh, in this tab, it's right next to it research notes. Those are the person notes, research notes. Hmm. So, and so, this one, tree maker? so this one, so I'll oh, see if I didn't want, so I could just cut, cut it from there and put it there. Okay. Um, and this is, this is in family tree maker. Yes. Yeah. And, and like if you're in this view, so there's the person notes. And here's the research note, you know. And okay. see, when you're, you're in this view, see, you'll see the note and see here, it, it actually tells you, okay, that's a research note. 
Okay. I did something similar to hear this. this personal, so. Okay. I did something similar to this in uh, notes, person notes. I did a timeline for myself just because I wanted some personal notes written. And when it prints out, see my book is about myself and then my parents, my siblings, my siblings' children. Then it goes to the next generation of grandparents. So I'm working backwards, but working towards ancestry rather than the other direction. You're doing so, an ancestor's book, so yeah. So when it first prints my name that I, this, this is my book about me, it prints my timeline. Then it prints my timeline again down in the section where I'm listed as a child of my parents. So I don't need to have it printed twice like that. Right, and where that is, and, that, and that's these uh, four groups, for items included, let's see there's primary, partner, child and list of children with mean section, child and list of children, no mean section. Now, okay, like- You're in primary? Yeah, well okay. primary, Primary partner in ch in this last one, child and list with no mean section, you typically want all the facts. What you want is this in child of list of children with mean section. Oh, this is okay. where you only want basic information and absolutely no notes. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, because the people that fall into this is where they're listed with their family, with their parent, but they also have their own section. Mm -hmm. So 99.9% .9 of the time where people say stuff's getting duplicated is because of this one section right here. Okay, you, okay. You like, just, like I said, I, I basically got their birth name and death and that's about it. Mm-hmm and nothing okay. else okay i don't want it printed out right in the beginning of my book saying this is the book right. about see, myself see, see see when you start the book yeah okay and, and it starts with you in in that section you're the primary i am your, your husband is the partner and then your children are the children and, uh -huh. and likewise, since you're doing an ancestors book, they'll probably all fall into this latter category because they're not going to have their own section. Oh, uh -huh. now you will. So now, when it gets to the next section where it lists your part, your parents. Uh -huh. uh, well, I I think it generally caters more doing ancestors. It, I believe it generally caters more towards the male. So then the your father would be the primary. Your mother would be the partner. Mm -hmm. You would fall into this section, child with main section, because you've got your own section. Oh, your siblings okay. would probably fall into this section because they don't have their own section. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Okay. Because I'm starting mine with myself and immediate family first and then working right. back because I think that's going to be more of an interest to my audience who is yeah. my immediate family and then maybe they might become interested in the older ancestry part yeah. <laughs> i'm trying to work backwards on it so okay so that's yeah. where it would come in so this okay. section right here yeah you want to like uncheck all this stuff and definitely don't have it print any notes okay okay and okay. you'll you'll be a lot happier with the results. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. Got it. So, um, any other questions? Um, oh man, I have a ton of questions, but, <laughs> um, can I, is it better not to move things around when you get it, when you create a document into word yes. and let family book creator do everything because like if I want to move pictures around it's better not to do it in word 
Well, well, if you do it in Word, whenever you redo the book, so, so like two years from now, if you redo the book, say like another reunion or whatever, yeah, you're going to have to redo that. Oh, anything you oh. do in Word. Yeah, yeah. Next time okay. you regenerate it, you're going to have to keep redoing it. Okay. So if you can do it in Family Tree Maker or tweak it in Family Book Creator, the better off you'll be. Yeah. Okay. So especially then, like when ordering the media and the size, okay. do it in Family Tree Maker. Okay. And the That's index right. will be better then too. Will be yeah. more well, correct. Well, the in Word, the index can... Oh, okay. You add pages and stuff. It can renumber and it can readjust mm -hmm. all, all the page numbering. And okay, okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But like I said, even stuff like typos and stuff like that, fix it in Family Tree Maker. Because once you fix yeah. it in Family Tree Maker, you're done. It's fixed. Mm -hmm. You won't mm -hmm. have to keep refixing it. Okay, okay. So, John, is there an issue with uh, copying over uh, every time? Uh, is that the, the usual practice when you do a backup? It uh, tells you that this file already exists and do you want to override it? Is that the common practice just to continue to override on there or what, what do people usually do? Well, in general practice, you should never overwrite your last back, your last known good backup. Say that again, please. In general, you should never overwrite your last known to be good backup. Oh, right. Okay, I got that. So, so I would rename it, you know, with like an A, B, C, D, or something like that. Okay. What I've been doing is adding the time that I did the backup to the file name. Okay. Right. You, you, yeah, you can do that too. You know, like, like 4 p.m., 6 p.m., 8 a.m. I, I use whatever. military time, so. At a time. Okay. Yeah. And that way you can just go into your index then and see when your last backup was, right? Right. And then, but you're going to continually get a new, a new file on the same information. But, uh, well, you get a new file that's been updated with the same information. Is that right? Correct? So you just yeah. So many backups and delete any older ones. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Once you're sure you won't have to go back to that previous one, like I said, I, I, I generally keep about two months worth of backups, mm -hmm. um, but I don't work on my trees every day. I mean, there's sometimes I back up three times a day. There's sometimes maybe once a week. So, um, and then if you're adding a time or, or just say a number or ABC, then that's will be your new file to, to come up the next time right. you open the family tree maker, correct? Well, for the for the backup, that won't change your tree well, name or anything. No, okay, gotcha. Yeah, it, it always defaults to today's date. So, the, the only time you'll ever get that that message you talked about is if you do more than one backup a day. Okay. Okay. I understand now. Thank you. So, no. So what do you do about printing your book? Do you take it to a copy shop or what, what do you advise on that? Uh, well, I've, I've got a very economical inkjet. I've got an Epson eco tank. It doesn't mm -hmm. use ink cartridges, just ink wells and, I mean, I, I've printed more than 25,000 pages, and I mean, I Oof. probably haven't even spent 80 bucks in ink. Hmm. Well, and do well, you... well, actually, I've spent 80 bucks in ink, but right now my ink wells are also full, so I'm good for another seven, 8,000 pages. Oh, wow. Do you, how do you bind your books? Do you spiral uh, bind them? or? I will, I will take it to a copy shop to get bound. Mm -hmm. Or what I about the one... cover? Huh? What about the cover? You can use a service like Lulu. Yeah. I you... well, okay. I just use the title page and then when it gets bound, they just put a like a clear plastic over at the top. Okay. 
Um, Actually, here, let me. And there's one good feature is when you save it as a PDF, the book is a PDF or Word document, you can just email that to a relative mm -hmm. and they can read it on their computer or they could go spend the money and have yeah. it. Here I'm hmm. looking up like, well, this, this is one friend out, a cousin of mine printed, but I, I printed out and then, so it's just got this like clear glass cover, it's spiral bound and, uh -huh. you know, and then there's others I've three hole punched and then use some of those bigger ones because that was like a 700 page book and I didn't want to get it split into three volumes and um, that, that was like I spent like a week doing nothing but printing because I, I mean I literally went through a case of paper. <laughs> wow. <laughs> One weekend I had two reunions so it's. I don't know how to show the, my picture of my book, but I was going to show you what I did and how it was bound, but I'm not really good. No, don't know how to get sh show you on my Zoom here. What what would I do? What share screen or? Yeah, you can share your screen if it's if it's on your computer. I think Is I've got. Screen? Is that the one you click? Oh, yeah, you should be able to share your screen. The green one share screen. Is that will that show? My book, if I'm just going to show it to you. No. As, as long as you've got it open on your computer. Yeah. Can you see it? Yeah. Yeah, I can see the back of it. So. Mm -hmm. I was not, I was not holding it in front of my camera. Now, okay, you can see it. it's just not, I guess I need to enlarge my picture, right? Well, you really can't, so. Not, yeah. not was, anyway, this this is a book that I did. Uh, a while back, and it's like John's. It's bound with the uh, the flexible and uh, cover and the spiral. Uh huh. It's fairly thick, as you can see. Yes. And I actually um, printed it out on my printer at home because at that time I was not for, uh, doing a lot, and uh, took it over to Home Depot. I mean, Office Depot. And they took my my printed copy and they put it on a, a heavy, a really nice uh, heavyweight paper. Mm. And then they they uh, bound it with the spiral. But you can see I've got my, my pedigree chart in it and everything. So that was mm -hmm. I don't, it was it, it was not very costly. Mm. So I don't know. I'm not into putting the hard bound covers online because it's um I like to flip through it. it's easier you, and it's it's a good quality paper if you ask them to print it on that kind of paper yeah. so mm -hmm. give you some uh, ideas you about how much did that cost then well I can't remember I had this was uh, my my family to, uh, about 10 years ago I did it and uh, now I'm working on my husband's family so I'm sure costs have changed but um uh, I, and, I would say fifty dollars or less, less than fifty dollars. And, and it's a big difference if you print it in color or black and white. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had, uh, well, I had a few colored pictures in there, and I'm not sure, but I think at the time that um, they put it into what they call their publisher, and. Uh, I don't know if they scanned it all into pub my copy into publisher and then ran nice printed paper and how they did it. Uh -huh. uh, it's an idea. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah I, I, uh, oh, sorry. I know if this summer if we have a family reunion, I'm planning on using like Lulu Express to print that hall book. I'm trying to decide if while well, I was talking about it. A little earlier, um, it, to get it spiral bound, I have to get it down to 470 pages, and I'm at like 501 right now. Mm. So I might have to start picking what media do, don't I want to print, or start playing with margins and font sizes. And sorry, what was the size of the, the spiral bound that you can go to? Uh, 470 pages. 
Okay. Yeah, this, the, that was one problem I forgot to mention that they they mentioned that if, I think that at the time they were doing mine, and they I couldn't have over a hundred pages, yeah. and my book went for. Uh, Oh, I'll see these back pages. And, and yeah, and when I brought a printed copy to be bound, yeah, uh, the the count wasn't that high. It wasn't 470 pages. It was I'm not sure exactly. It might have been like about three 300 or 350 pages. That at least those that local place would bind. Um, but then if you print it yourself. Is only about five bucks to get it bound. To get a yeah. spiral bound, and that includes that black plastic cover and then the clear plastic front. Right. You know, mm -hmm. so that's you not ever, when, when you're taking them for a um, <clears throat> family reunion, do you charge the family, family members or do you just give them to them? Uh, for, for, for what I did there, no, I didn't. Um, Someone did give me wow. 50 bucks once because I, I, well, I printed out three copies. Well, there's certain people that I wanted to have a copy because uh, like my cousin from Texas who I hadn't seen in about 10 years, you know, well, he was going to get a copy. Uh, the people that organized the, the reunion, she, she, uh, Denise was getting a copy and then, you know, just other certain family members I wanted to have one but then I had three extra copies uh that I gave away as door prizes hmm. now now if I do the Lulu Express I'm going to give a, and if we have that family reunion this summer this coming up summer um that I will charge you know and depending upon how many it's like if if only 10 15 people want it it'd be about 30 bucks a piece um, if 30 or more people want it, the, the, there's a price break at 30, uh, then they'd probably jump down to about 25 bucks. So, um, my experience has been, uh, I've looked at Staples printing it myself, Lulu Express and some other things, and you have to balance how much technical energy do you want to do as John does as printing it at home and he's got the super duper printer. Yeah, just taking it someplace else. Um, and I did a, my books were less than 100 pages, and I did sort of a cost analysis of going to Staples or Home Depot um, and found that for me that was not as attractive as going just to Lulu. I did not have to invest a lot of energy, yeah. I gave them a PDF file. Told them whether I wanted spiral or hard copy, and you said color or not, and what weight paper, yeah. and it was done. Right. And so it, I think you have to add when you're talking about printing, you, how much intellectual energy do you have, wisdom do you have to invest to figure it out, do it, and you mm -hmm. yeah. is having somebody else doing it, and then which somebody else is best for you. Uh, so. If you don't want to invest a lot of wisdom right now, I was and I was not. I forget I, when I looked at when I looked at the staples. I was not happy with with the cost of of trying to have them do it for me versus just going to Lulu Express. Mm -hmm. So my two cents based on this year's analysis. Yeah, and Lulu Express. I guess you get through uh, the internet. It's yeah. a it's an online business on the internet. Okay. You get an account. They, you, you, the input to the system is a, a PDF file uh, of, of the inside of the book, and you can have a PDF file of the cover that you want, or you can use their cover. You can select spiral bound or, or whatever, you know, whatever it's called when you have a book. Book. I don't yeah, know. I think they call it like per, perfect bound or something like that. You have different two or three choices of how you want the yeah. bound. Or the, what weight paper you want, and I we just did it, uh, and I was very pleased with this, with the, uh, as you said, the color, the heavy paper, and the quality of their work. It didn't didn't take that long, and and I've also, uh, back to the question, I've sent it to relatives, so I could, I could, what is the word I'm trying to say? Order it and send it to you if I got your address, and it takes care right. of that. I don't have to 
it doesn't come to me if I don't want it to. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's my experience with Lulu Express. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there's Lulu and Lulu Express. Lulu Express, I thought you had to order all the copies. No. Well, it, you do if you're going to order like 30 copies and things like that. You know, if I was then, ordering. The same yeah, I thought the regular Lulu, that's where, where your family members can just order their own copy. That's right. Or, or So or Lulu Express, I can have it sent to someone else. Okay. One copy, small, you know. Yeah. So, well, if you made 50 copies and you wanted to, your family reunion was a couple of provinces over or states, um, it, you could send it, you could get them just to send a, a bulk shipment to right. my son there kind of thing. Okay. Yeah. 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 And it, you always uh, send it into like Lulu Express or Staples and that, uh, uh, well, you have to go take a thumb drive into or or what for the pdf it's always has to be a pdf yeah generally different places might most of them are pdfs even staples or home depots a pdf for the most part yeah so, okay so but uh yeah they'll tell you some you might be able to you know submit it online and say they'll let you know when to pick it up uh, I mean, uh, talk to them, they'll tell you the best way of, they'd prefer it and stuff, so. John. Yes. Um, going back to um, the format of PDF uh, for things that you download from newspaper.com. Yeah. Does that improve the resolution that you will get as opposed to just importing them right into ancestry from newspapers.com oh oh yes because that's horrible and i never do that i okay. always save it because it always saves a lower as an image and it makes a mess of your tree because uh -huh. <laughs> when it asks for a description guess what that's your custom fact type <laughs> oh okay gotcha thank so, you so what do you do john you told us what not to do but I, I save it directly so my, to the, I save it to my computer and then I manually just add it to the person. Gotcha. Okay. Because so newspaper directly. Yeah, because otherwise news using the save to news uh, save to ancestry option like find a grave does it newspapers both three probably does it though I haven't used it. It, it'll always ask, you know, well, give us a description. Oh, well, this is my Aunt Edna's obituary or something, you know. Well, when you save it to Ancestry, put it into your tree, attach it to her, all of a sudden there'll be a custom fact called Aunt Edna's obituary. And it's like, you know, so you're going to have just tons and tons of custom facts. And I, I wonder where it. those came from. Uh, all of a sudden, I started seeing those, and I wasn't sure where they were coming from. So that's yeah. where they came from, huh? Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. And, and if you do want them to print out in a book, you're going to want to probably re-download them anyway, because it's only going to be a low-res image that's in your tree. Sure. Great. Thank you. So. Mm. Any more questions? I know uh, I haven't set the date. I'll probably be doing one tomorrow too. Um, though I'll have to see uh, what my schedule will be like. Otherwise, Thursday for sure. I know the next one is going to be about combining books, and this will be done in Word. So if you want to do like in one book, say have an ancestors, an ancestors and descendants of this couple. So it's like basically combining two or more books into one. And then that you will have to do in Word. So, um, mm -hmm. but that will be the next class I do. And then, uh, like I said, we could touch more on media. It's like, I think we could have about three, four classes just on media, mm -hmm. especially just on uh the new features with the Word documents and stuff, so. We can apply what we learned today and then come back and have another class and say, I need help. 
Yeah. <laughs> John, I would suggest for media, one of the most confusing things for newbies is this FBC category stuff that we touched on it today. Yeah. And I think you can have just a session that says, I want to take you through how to add categories, for example, obituaries, because if you look in the categories, there aren't any. So maybe you want obituaries category. It has nothing to do with FBC. Then you have these FBC categories to do these things such as uh, control the width of a of a image or how to uh, I'll allow you to add a PDF. I think that subject is so confusing to newbies that that would be a subject in and of itself, where you yeah. have people through different through the class different instances. Yeah, um, I'm going to reshare my screen here. I'm going to give you a little. I don't know if Stefan would approve or not, because I'm helping him proofread the new manual. Yeah. But I'm going to, I love this new feature. Um, oh, let me just share just this document. Uh, this is one of the appendix, and here he lists all the categories and the corresponding page numbers. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect. In the manual where this is. I mean, obviously he only does like one photo width, but you go to page 53 and it explains all that. And oh, then it also explains these custom fact types too. Th that's step two. A lot of people don't get the, don't pick up the fact that the FBC custom fact has to be added as a category to Family tree maker. That yeah. needs to be a big bold warning before you get to this thing. What, for what you're about to read, if it says FBC dash dash dash, yeah. you want to make a picture wider, you got to add that to the category of family tree maker. And then here are the categories that you can add. Yeah. When will that be coming out, John? Uh, as soon as he's happy with it. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> well, he just sent this one to me like two days ago. I haven't had a chance to proofread it. Like right now, it's just making sure commas and dots are where they are. Mm -hmm. I think we fixed any of the typos and stuff like that, you know, so there's nothing. Well, that table that you just showed us, that's great. That's really good. Yeah. Will all of us get a copy of the manual if we bought this package? Yeah, I mean, yeah, you can you can download it just from the their site, you know, once it's available. Okay. Because you uh, just go to let's see here. I think I've got a. Let me just share my screen. Because you just go to Family Book Creator, well, to the download area, and like I said, the link is in the group. So when you download here and then um, there's the manual. See right now, this is still the old manual version 2020-01. This was done last January, the first of the year. Uh -huh. So once you see this date, but I'll, I'll, I'll even make an announcement, you know, and say, hey, the new manual's out and, uh, go download it so yeah okay that will that'd be great I, i've only had this software a week yeah <laughs> and so i'm trying to figure out how i'm getting through all this yeah well it, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to download this version i wouldn't print it out though yeah just because this new manual is coming out and this one is i don't know this one is 80 or 90 pages, this this current one is all well, 111. Uh -huh. It's considerably bigger because it's got all the new stuff in it. And mm -hmm. So, hmm. so, and then, uh, well, actually I've got the manual here. Oh, the old one is, the current manual is 97, this, Beta one is 111, so 14 pages longer. So, 
So. Well, this has been a very helpful session to me. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, yeah, we'll have more of them. And I think I've even, I might even have time next week that we can do some stuff and we could even just have a mini Q and A session or. Oh well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Even last minute, you know, just journal questions. Um, yeah. So. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Yeah. Thanks, John. Okay. Talk to you all later. Thanks, John. All right. Thank you.